Hello, I'm MC Toom. You know, we talk about Mark Steele a lot because he's the hilariously absurd face of anti-5G fierce gaming. His so ridiculous message of 5G energy weapons hidden in lamppost is the kind of self-satirizing nonsense that makes more people laugh than it scares. So what's next, Mark? Is the KGB in the shed in your backyard? Are talking bats in your attic? Or did you discover that birds aren't real and our government cover up to spy on you? Yeah, sadly, Mark's 15 minutes of fame are up. And as good as he's been for our ratings, the team of scriptwriters at Brigade 77, you know, the guys who tell me what to say, well, they won't... They won't allow me to do another episode about him. They said I can't talk about him anymore because he's just not funny. You know, what's funny about watching an ignorant old man repeatedly debase himself? They asked, you know, why would anybody want to see Mark forced to come up with implausible conspiracy theories as he descends even further into despair and self-loathing? Nobody cares about a man so irrelevant for whom even Kate Shemirani, the Botox-injecting nurse, she turned toxic quack. Um but she has nothing but contempt for him, too. He's a man so debased that even his attempts at humor are forced through a smile so obviously fake it's clear that he hates his life and wants it all to end. Why would anyone want to see that? Mark, the rest of this episode isn't about you. Sorry, buddy. What if the real face of 5G fear trolling wasn't a curmudgeonly self-loathing buffoon with an impenetrable Geordie accent. What if 5G paranoia came in a well-spoken, respectable package? She'd be a middle-aged mom with a college degree who wears frocks from Marks and Spencer. She'd be a published author and the sort of person who signs petitions that protects kittens and puppies. And most of all, she's thinking of the children. Her children, my children, your children. If you are under 18 and watching this video, she's thinking of you. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? She's the uber mother. She wants to protect you from evil 5G radiation, which is way more protective than your real mother. Your real mother, she couldn't give a damn. She's too busy getting locked down drunk on Boone's Farm wine. She doesn't even care about 5G, that it's expanding around the globe or what it could do to your brain. The person I'm thinking of really cares. She cares about every single photon and the impact it might be having on you right now. And if she has to make a petition to see that fewer of those naughty photons find their way into our collective skulls, then she's going to be the one to do it. I'm talking about Sally Beer. Sally is a British nutritional therapist who runs a bunch of Facebook groups. The biggest one is called Halt 5G in UK and Ireland. She lives in Montpellier, a foofy suburb of Bristol, which is a city in the west of England. She tries to present herself as England's most sensible anti-5G activist, which is a very low bar, sort of like the world's smartest amoeba or the world's tallest midget. Why is it always England? What's with you British and anti-5G nutters? Did 5G insult your mother? The mother we've already established is drunk on cheap wine. Yeah, well, Sally, do you have uh, nothing better to occupy your time? Did you petition to require all Turkish delights sold in Bristol to be sugar-free come to fruition? Yeah. You were just itching to find some new social justice topic to champion, weren't you? Is this a foot shooting competition, Sally? Complain about the communication infrastructure that you so desperately need, and then when you don't have it, complain that your kids can't do your do their homework because you don't have enough bandwidth. See, the great thing about Sally is, like all the best nutters, she can say things that make no sense at all while still coming across as completely charming. For some people, the benefits of technology are greater than they are for other people. If if someone 
can sh can show us a, a provable list of the benefits of 5G, we should all sit down and have a think about that. Will it help in terms of getting people to hospital more quickly? Um, are robotic factories going to, to help the human race? Okay, Sally, I can see the source of your confusion. You've learned about 5G from an episode of Futurama. 5G is not going to get you to the hospital faster, and it's not going to replace you with a robot. It's just a wireless communication system. So with things like 3G and 4G and Wi-Fi, I mean, I, I use those myself. I think we all benefit a lot from using those. Sally seems to understand that 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi are communication technologies. But for some reason, she thinks that 5G does something completely different. You see, 2G, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, they, they move bytes between your phone and somewhere else on the internet. That's all they do. 5G is the exact same thing, only faster, and it uses less power. As soon as the costs outweigh the benefits, and as soon as you start to think, is it possible that this latest technology is simply, is not actually about progress? It's That's a, a PR and a glossy brochure promise. How much is this really about progress? I don't know if the, if the answer to that in terms of 5G is that, they're, that the benefits are going to be that great. At so Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, and even 2G were just PG. But along comes 5G, full of promises, and Sally's not buying it. Whoa there, aren't we going a little too fast? What are we going to do with all this extra bandwidth? Were bytes even intended to go this fast? What are these costs she thinks exists? It's not like we're making her pay for the whole UK 5G network upgrade. Maybe Sally should join the new Amish sect that rejects any te telecommunication service invented after 2015. Okay, well, back in the real world, let's recap. 5G is just the next generation of mobile phone technology. Its principal benefit is that it can handle more people sending more data than the 4G network. In terms of how it works and what it does, it's really not all that much different to 4G. It mostly uses the same frequencies and almost the same protocols. It's actually just the next iteration of the cell phone protocols published in succession with the previous 14 iterations of the standard. There's no need to call it anything, but the marketers got involved. And they wanted to create a differentiation so they could slap a new and improved sunburst sticker on something. But when it comes to how the radios communicate with each other, it's not doing anything new at all. One of the reasons why 5G can handle more traffic is that service providers can choose to place lower powered base stations that are closer together. 4G and 3G did this as well, but 5G can do it even better. Using lower power means that cells don't interfere with each other quite so much and has the potential to reduce individual exposure. That's good news for everybody, especially people like Sally, who fear the minuscule amounts of radiation we get from cell towers. In terms of performance, 5G is a great step up from 4G, but from a technological perspective, it's just a minor evolution. But why is Sally so upset about it? Well, that's quite hard to discern because she uses science in the way a drunkard uses a lamppost. Um, the in, so the industry will say, no, 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 our, our studies show that Wi-Fi and 3G and 4G are safe. Um, so they've they've cherry picked the studies that don't show any danger yet. But first of all, we know that studies are, are faulty. Secondly, they haven't tested five G, so that just doesn't apply to five G, which well, is a tested it in much Bristol. higher frequency. They've radiation. tested it here in Bristol, apparently. Well, they're starting, but they're not going to know the health effects yet, are they? Unless people very obviously start dropping dead right, left, and centre. In Sally Beer's world, no true study would ever say that five G is safe. Therefore, any study which shows five G is safe wouldn't possibly be a true study. And only a true Scotsman could spot the fallacy in that argument. In other words, Sally is the chief cherry picker in this orchard, and they say the best cherries come from Bristol. That doesn't mean that the studies that don't show harmful effects, that they don't necessarily prove that there aren't harmful effects. It might have just been that they didn't show up in the studies. So let's get this straight. The studies that do show harm are definitely right and to be taken seriously. And every study that doesn't show harm should be ignored 
because they're obviously the work of captured regulators and a biased pro-industry shills. These people can't be trusted because they all want to murder us. And Sally really does seem to think that every 5G transmitter is deadly. It's going to transform Bristol into a giant game of Clue, or Cluedo if you're British. So we know somebody killed Colonel Mustard. I'm guessing that it was Miss Scarlet with the lead pipe in the drawing room. But Sally Beer thinks it was Professor Vodafone in the absolutely everywhere with the 5G base station. But as certain as Sally is that 5G is the murder weapon, like every 5G truther, she's a bit hazy on the details of how it actually does harm. So what does it actually do to you having one of these outside your door? I don't know. But um, I, I've read anecdotal reports from Vienna that people who, who are living now in the 5G electro smog are have suffering tight bands around the head, tinnitus, vomiting and nausea and dizziness. If that starts happening once 5G is activated, if, if a lot of anecdotal reports start coming out and people start saying they're, they're suffering those things, they might be told they're, they're imagining it and maybe they will be imagining it. We don't know, but they can't start doing this until they've proven that it's safe. It's called the precautionary principle and it should be invoked. Well, when you let your imagination run wild, you can apply the precautionary principle to literally anything. You want to go on vacation? No. You might get bit by a king cobra and then forced to enlist in the French Foreign Legion. Are you thinking of getting a new job? Don't do it. Don't do it. Your boss might be a vampire who wants to wants you to sing in his boy band. You want more bandwidth on your phone network? Well, hold on. Because according to the studies that Sally just cherry-picked, there's reason to believe that 5G is associated with just about every malaise ever recorded in Montpellier. When you let your imagination run rampant, as Sally Beer ap appears to be doing, literally any bad thing is possible, and therefore, you must not do anything. Definitely don't do anything new. So I think this is the problem at the heart of the 5G truther movement. None of these people who are convinced 5G is bad have taken the time to learn the difference between 5G, which they know is deadly, and 4G, which they think is just merely suspicious. The fact that 5G systems have been in our pockets, or rather 4G systems have been in our pockets and have blanket coverage in every city, including the neighborhood of Montpellier, where Sally lives, with her perfectly healthy family and without any statistically significant findings of harm. This says all you need to know about how harmful it is. It's not harmful at all. You see, if 4G and 5G were capable of 100th the harm that concern trolls like Sally Beer have claimed, then we would have noticed it by now. Let's say, for argument's sake, that the number of phone users since the 1990s has increased by a factor of 1,000. If that were the case, we might expect a proportional change in the kinds of diseases that Sally thinks are caused by 5G. Well. At least Mark Steele has a clear imagination of what harms 5G can do. He thinks it's an energy weapon that can knock down buildings or shoot you like a sniper. Mark's claims, despite being ludicrously wrong and informed only by his paranoid, fevered imagination, have the benefit of being testable. The Brigade 77, Brigade 77, 77 Brigade, Brigade 77, Brigade 77, Brigade 77, Brigade 77, Brigade 77. Yeah, sorry, Brigade 77. I promised that, that this is really the last time I'll mention Mark Steele again. His grandiose delusions just aren't interesting anymore. I get it. Anyway, Sally is counting on your general sense of malaise. She's hoping that you will vibe with her sense of technology anxiety. And even though we can't figure out what the harm actually is... So what does it actually do to you, having one of these outside your door? I don't know. We can all agree with her that there must be harm. Why, why do you think that there's been so little criticism in the mass media of this new technology? I don't know. I don't know if it's because the media is influenced by the government, but we know that that's often the case, so possibly there's something to do with that. I have no idea. Oh, Sally doesn't understand why the mainstream media isn't covering the story. Oh, 
Could it be a vast government conspiracy? Is it a clever misdirection? While we worry about Huawei, are those the only two possibilities? Well, I can play the game of false dichotomy too. I don't understand why the media isn't covering Sally Beer's preposterous made-up stories. Could it be that the media is so in love with the government that they don't want to make it cry by saying boo-boos about poor widow 5G? Or could it be because Bowser took the media's power stars in order to turn himself massive and somehow use it to marry Princess Peach? Well, maybe there's a slightly simpler explanation behind the mainstream media's utter lack of interest in Sally's theories. She's wrong. She's making stuff up. She cherry-picks stories from discredited lunatic researchers, and she's already admitted she hasn't got much of a clue about anything she's talking about. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. If a journalist did what they should do, they'd figure out what 5G is, and then they would quickly figure out that not only does Sally have no background or qualifications to talk about the subject, but that she's wholly wrong about it. Yeah, the only people who are willing to interview her are the kinds of people who just don't care. People who don't have any reputation to lose in the first place. But Sally doesn't claim to be an expert. Who needs expertise when you've got science on your side? These are some of the groups of scientists who are gravely concerned about 5G. Yeah, this is Sally's approach to science. Not only do you cherry pick your studies, you cherry pick the sources you're prepared to listen to. And when her beautiful basket of cherries doesn't impress the national and international organizations that set safety standards for radio devices, she petitions. And what is she petitioning for? With this petition, we're asking there is a pause in 5G rollout, ideally for five years. We think that's the absolute minimum that you should be looking at safety during. She wants to haul 5G for five years. Why five years? Well, that's because that's one year for every G. These are some of the groups of scientists who are gravely concerned about 5G. So first of all, this is how I, my ears first pricked up about 5G was because the Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry at Washington State University, Martin Poole, um, there's, there's a video going around. He has said that 5G is the stupidest idea in the history of the world. No, that's flat earth. Or possibly energy weapons mounted on top of lampposts and gateshead. Those are pretty stupid ideas. An energy-efficient phone system that can move gigabytes of data? Well, that's pretty smart. But to the petitioner-in-chief, everything is an opportunity to petition. Want to get your way? Just have a bunch of people sign your petition. And if you really want to make an impact, don't just get anybody to sign. Find 250 scientists and make them sign a consensus statement. So Sally didn't prepare this document, but he shows it off a lot. This consensus statement is the strongest evidence she has that scientists are on her side. The problem is, once you look at it, the statement is only really evident of her wishful thinking. At the top of the list, a computer scientist who graduated in 1971. Well, I'll definitely call this guy if I need my PDP-11 repaired. What about Dr. Inderjit Gill? He has several, several I say, papers published. That's more than a couple, but less than some teen. And probably less than 11 inch. And that's not even an actual number. Would it be so hard to say the specific number of papers Indrajit actually wrote? A little evasive, are we? Okay, so we've got Adam Jameson. He's an architect. How is that relevant? And uh, let's see, Heather Evra Lee, a retired nutritionist. Is that even a kind of science? And then uh, Natasha Perrick, a homeopath. Well, she's definitely not a scientist. But my favorite, my favorite on the list is A.J. Wood. He's a homeopathic vet. Yes, a homeopathic vet. The document calls itself a consensus statement, by which I think she means that a bunch of people agree on something. Of the millions of people on this planet whose job title includes the word scientist, these are the best people she could find. But as we've seen, and 
at least two of them are homeopaths, which is a, you know, a form of absurd quack medicine that predates modern medical science. See, I know more than 230 people who think the earth is flat, and at least one of them is a homeopathic vet too. But in Sally Beer's circular logic, she says there's a scientific consensus because this is what the leading researchers in electromagnetic radiation believe. And she defines the leading researchers into electromagnetic research as the people who agree precisely with her, despite their lack of qualifications. And like all ANSI 5G truthers, Sally is happy to make up stuff, or in this case, agree wholeheartedly when an equally ignorant journalist makes a completely wrong statement. And it's worth saying that uh, the frequencies and the power of 5G is an order of magnitude bigger than the previous types of technology. Uh, absolutely, yes. It's actually yeah. a lot more powerful. So if yeah. it is causing harm, which we know it, it's possible, and certainly the old types of technology, this will be much more harmful. Right, exactly. No, no, it's not. In the UK, the 5G frequencies are the exact same as 4G right now. And the allowed power limits are exactly the same. But in practice, the power levels for 5G are actually much lower. So Sally, that's an absolute complete lie. It's obvious you don't know what you're talking about. So, but have you even read the spec or bothered to understand for yourself what it actually does? No. Sally, she trusts the opinion of the homeopathic vet who signed the study that agree with her opinion and is therefore correct, and not the decades of scientists and engineers whose work made 5G possible. Sure, anytime I need important technical or medical advice, I go to homeopath too, right? Doesn't everybody? So anyway, as I was saying, um, there's nothing that Sally loves more than a petition. Well, she loves to protest too. But her sort of protesting is gentle. Send RG, stop RG. Send RG, stop RG, RG, Oh, bless their little hearts, the British middle class protesters, with your correctly spelled placards and your demure protestations. Just look at you, all adorable on that exquisitely manicured lawn. It's so delightful, isn't it? I almost want to stop 5G just to put a smile on their faces. Almost. No, no, actually not. Um, this was September 14th, 2020. Sally Beer isn't the sort of person to casually wave a handwritten sign around the Blist Bristol Town Hall. She's a woman on a mission, and her mission is to single-handedly overturn the entire consensus on non-ionizing radiation safety. Yeah, Sally was attending the Bristol Con Council to petition them to overturn their reliance on the ICNIRP safety standards. Sounds impressive, but most, of, most people, including our own government, are actually oblivious as to what 5G is going to bring. Yes, that's Sally addressing the Bristol Council. The gist of her argument is that Public Health England should be ignored, and Bristol Council should instead listen to Sally Beer a nutritional therapist who has no qualifications at all in RF safety, but nevertheless thinks she knows better because she's read some studies agreed to by the aforementioned homeopathic vet. Well, Public Health England is the executive agency that's part of the British Department of Health and is in charge of setting safety standards for just about everything, including non-ionizing radiation. You can imagine how well this went. I'm afraid that I'm going to disappoint you. My view is that we should not pause or stop the rollout of 5G here in Bristol. I think we are on the cusp of a genuine revolution in technology with 5G. That was the councillor from the Conservative Party, Britain's centre-right party. And here's a clip of the opposition representing the centre-left Labour Party. However, I'm dismayed that it's this topic we're discussing because these concerns are scientifically unfounded and those who brought this petition have been misled and in turn are sadly misleading others. Um, they're from the same conspiracy theorists 
fuelled by fake news and misinformation that brought us the greatest hits such as vaccines cause autism, people being allergic to power lines, the government spraying chemicals out the back of aeroplanes, and of course the earth being flat. It was probably the only time when the conservative and labor opposition actually agreed on something. That basically Sally is nuts and nobody should listen to her. Ever. But she's a uniter, not a divider. Any normal person might take that as a sign that they need to reevaluate, try something new. But for Sally, it's a sign that she's on to something big. If you read her forum, you'll see that she's promoting another appeal by Michael Mansfield QC. QC is short for Queen's Counsel. It means he's a very expensive lawyer. Sally and her friends have raised 120,000 pounds, mainly from their paranoid people in their Facebook group. They want to force a judicial review over whether the British government's plan to roll out 5G is legal or not. As I understand it, judicial review is a legal mechanism that allows a court to question whether the British government acted according to law. And if you read how Sally is selling it to her Facebook followers, you'd think that this lawsuit is going to bring about the end of 5G. It's not. And it can't. At most... It can ask the question of whether the government has to take note of the homeopathic vet types who sign consensus statements instead of listening to the statisticians, epidemiologists, and safety experts for government uh, that the government employs for precisely this purpose. I'm not saying that Sally is going to get a cut of this, but win or lose Michael Mansfield QC can definitely avoid that new loft extension he's been always wanting. So, uh, win or lose, um, well, who am I kidding? These guys always lose. This is money down the drain for the simple reason that the technology in 5G is almost the same thing as 4G. Which, as we know, since she happily uses a 4G phone, Sally thinks is perfectly safe. So today's uh, show ends with a challenge. You can find the URL to Sally Beer's Facebook group in the description. I'm asking you to join it and ask her if she can identify what it is she's so worried about with 5G. What is the new feature that she thinks will cause harm? If people say it's the new frequencies, you can point to the page on my website, which shows that there aren't any new frequencies, at least in England right now. Uh, they're using the same frequency ranges as 4G. See if you can work out why Sally is trying to raise money for a cockamamie court case that's almost certainly halfway to losing already. So last time I asked her this question, she kicked me out of the group. I'm not angry about it. Really, I'm, not angry. I'm fine. I'll get over it. Anyway, um, and then count how many seconds... It takes her to ban you. Yeah, because she's 100% guaranteed that Sally will ban you when you start asking questions she can't answer. And as we established today, there's almost nothing she can say about the subject of 5G other than that she thinks it's bad. So thanks for watching. I might tell talk more about this court case in a future episode. And boy, oh boy, it is wacky. Uh, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. Also be sure to comment below with the results of your interactions with Sa uh, Sally on Facebook. And Sally, feel free to comment too. I won't censor you. That's what you do. So what does it actually do to you having one of these outside your door? I don't know. <laughs>